welcome to today's video. Today's outfit is inspired by Sabia Sachi's Lenga and Michael Shinko's dress for Ashwarya Rai at Cannes. If you remember that light blue one that just went on forever. So I want to make the Lenga slightly like Ashwarya Rai's dress. I want to make the blouse like the Fizar collection of Sabia Sachi where he had the really deep neck and the half sleeves. Um, so I'm going to use some trimming, it's not going to be embroidered, it's going to be plain silk. I'm going to use this fabric here and I'm dividing this video up into two so that you can make the blouse in one tutorial and the lenga in the second tutorial. For the lenga you're going to need some silk, you're going to need some lining, some thread that goes really well, your measuring tape, can't do anything without our scissors. Two zips, exactly the same colour as your outfit. One for the top and one for the linger. For the hemming, we're going to use the trouser hemming that you, I always use. I love this stuff. You can get it in the pound shop. We're going to need some pins, the really nice long ones, three and a half millimetres, and some paper clips. These will help us keep our trimming in place. You can use fabric clips, but these are cheaper and I have them at home. We're going to use this trimming, which has a really nice uh, shiny glitter effect, plus it's got the border. To get the actual skirt looking like uh, Michael Chinko's dress, I'm going to use Can Can. But what I'm going to do with this Can Can is make a complete circle, just like I am with the Lenga, so that I do get the ruffles that I want. Now, this can can is white. Um, you can't actually get the uh, uh, wider can can in colour. So that's a bit of a shame, but I'm hoping it's not going to show. And this is actually 58 um, inches wide. Um, it's folded over at the moment. Let me show you the edge. Here we go. So the can can is this wide, which has got going to give us the uh, length and the poofiness that we need for this outfit. My waist is 32 and the quarter of that is 8. I know a quarter circle here needs to measure 8. And so to roughly get this kind of 8 here, if I pin this up 5, And I pin this at five and I'm just taking that number as a rough guess we're gonna just keep changing it until we get the right amount and here's a five there now what I can do with my measuring tape is just curve round these points so here's the first pin I'm just going to curve around these points and then you can see that I can get that 18 inch quarter, which means that that circle will be 32 inches, which is what I want. But to work out how much fabric we need for this lingo, we know that the waist needs to be five inches um, long here. And to that, I need to add on the length that I want my lingo to be ready at, which is 40 inches, that gives me 45. And then you want to allow yourself some seam allowance. So add one or two inches to that. Now all you need to do is substitute my measurement for your measurement and you know how long you need that lingo to be and you know how much fabric you need that to be too. So don't forget, this is a measurement for a full circle lingo. That would be 188 inches. On that basis, I know I need this to be 45 inches long because I don't need to do any hemming to the can can. You may want to put trimming around it so that it doesn't catch or poke you in any way. So this is 45 inches long and I can cut this along here. That'll give me one half of my um, circle. I've just cut some can can here of 90 inches long. This is going to be half my circle. I want two of these and then once we've got two of our pieces we're going to cut that into a semicircle. 
To cut the waste of the can can, actually, I've got uh, four folds here, you can see. What we want to do is pin down our uh, little marking so we know where to cut. I know I need this to be at five inches here. And this to be at five inches here. One more. So I'll get this curve nice. And that, once I've cut this out, will be the full circle to go around my waist. Just check that this is going to give you the waist that size that you need. So just carefully put the measuring tape around your pins. And that's giving me 32. So that's what I need. So follow your pins and just cut this shape. So I'm going to keep these um, together because this can can is huge. Um, I'm going to keep this pin down so that nothing moves out of place and we can cut the bottom of our can can. Probably easier to put this on the floor and do it, but I want to show you nicely on the camera. So I'm putting this on the table. So now. I have the length correct here, and if I fold this one more time, to cut the length of your linger, pin in little markings of how long you need it. So for me, that's 40 inches, and just mark in as many places as you can because when it comes to cutting it, it will make it a lot easier. Pull it in through all layers of the net. And I'm doing this at 40. And even though this is going off the table, I'm going to put all my pins in now and then I can cut it in one go. Okay, now let's cut by following these pins that we've just put in. These pins may not show up, um, but I can see them here. So I'm just aiming for the next pin. And I'm not going to take the pins out because the can can is so big and kind of stiff and, you know, not, just not behaving very well. Um, I'm just going to leave the pins in because it helps me just put it away and uh, um, deal with it. So my next pin is here. And remember, we're not going to hem the can-can in any way, but you can, if you want, um, just put a binding edge on it so that it doesn't uh, poke you. This is what we have left. And if you wanted to, this could come in handy because you could cut away this much of it, still having like a full round circle and making um, 
the bottom of an outfit, maybe the inside lining of an outfit, uh, you could put this can can on it. So definitely save this. It's not easy to find in the UK, although I have seen it in a few shops in Ilford. So, uh, but Garps in Ilford being one of them. So if you did want some can can, they do have it there. They have colors as well, but I don't think they have the wide one like this. This is 56 inches wide. So here's our can can. You can see that's coming out like a cone shape, which is what we want. Now keep this to one side while we cut the linga itself. We're going to start by cutting our length of our linga. And to do that, we need to know how long we want to keep it. And we're going to put in pins as our marking. So this is the length that I want. 47 inches and 47 inches being uh, 40 the length that I wanted to keep it 5 inches for my waist allowance and 2 inches for seam allowance let's just put in pins everywhere from this point here at 47 bringing your measuring tape right to the edge to that point stretching it out and then pin down and this is where you're going to cut and you want to put in as many of these as you can because it will make it easier for you to cut Now you can cut your waist. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to pin in where we need our measurement for our waist. And if you remember, mine is 32 inches. And what I'm going to do is put my pins in at five inches in a quarter circle here. And again, cut around them. You do want to double check your fabric on the inside is exactly to the edge. So we get the right measurement and start pinning in at five inches probably only need three because it's such a small uh, measurement and the one this way and once you've put your pins in just do one quick check so that if you Take your measuring tape and just place it around the pins. That's giving me like eight and a half, so more than enough for my waist. And with that, you're ready to join your can-can um, to your linga, and then we can add a waistband.
Now really with the lining, all I want to do is have a protection in between the can-can, which don't forget has the holes in it. And I want to put it in between the can-can and the silk fabric because when you iron it, you don't want to have any of this pattern coming through. So what I've got here is three meters of lining and I folded this um, once and I'm folding it again. So I've got four layers and you can see how I've got just a short end and a long end there, which is the width of the fabric. Now, that's going to be enough. So I'm just going to use that as my guide and I'm going to measure what this distance is. That's 29 inches. So if I make a, it's going to be a complete circle because it's going all the way around. If I put in my markings for 29 inches, I think that will be a, quite a, quite sufficient. And any lining fabric that you have left over, if you did actually want to put it on the inside, so between your legs and the can-can, if it's uncomfortable, we can still do that. The can-can I've got is quite comfy, so we can um, decide on that after. So as always, I'm just putting in my pins enough so that I can uh, follow the cutting. And I'm just doing them all at 29 inches so that I've got this complete uh, even circle. Now just cut around your pins. Just aim to the next pin. Because the can-can net is quite comfortable, it's quite soft, I think it's going to be okay without any lining in between the legs and your actual outfit. Um, now again, we're going to cut the um, waist here at the same distance we did before. So because I have this can-can, I'm just going to use this as my measurement. For the waistband, I'm going back to a cutoff that I've got from the linga. So if you can see here, it's got this um, curved shape from where we cut the linga. And what I need is enough fabric to go all around my waist. And uh, it needs to be high enough so that it takes the trimming that I want to use. If I cut my fabric at four inches and then when I double it over, I'll get the two inches that I need. I'm going to make that really nice and generous at 36 because you can always cut it shorter afterward and make it nice. 36, I'm going to double that at 18. There's nothing worse than not having enough fabric, so whatever you do, allow enough for seam allowance on the top and on the ends. It needs to be four inches high, so actually let's cut that off first. So here it's four inches. I'm gonna cut the height of the waistband at five and a half inches. So once it's folded over, there's enough for seam allowance on both sides. Five and a half. Just pin in your marking, then you know what you're aiming for. Once you've pinned in your markings, just start to cut, looking straight ahead. You get that nice straight cut. Once you've cut your waistband, you want to give this a good iron. 
Ironing it also helps you find your centre point. So just fold it in half and give this an iron. Next thing you want to do is place our trimming on top of the waistband. Here's my trimming. And I want to have this right up here. And I'm actually going to sew on top of this trimming using my sewing machine um, with a brown thread so that you wouldn't be able to see it. And I'm going to put it right to the edge so that the trimming doesn't touch my skin and you can just slightly see a bit of the silk fabric. That will give you a nice comfort around your waistband and it will ensure that your waistband is as small as you need it to be. Um, the other thing I would say to watch out for when it comes to the trimming, you can see that this end of my trimming is um, fairly straight. It's, there's a bit of a, a damage bit here, not too keen on this here, but it's much better than this end of it. So if I put this down, you can see how it actually curves and that will look really messy on your waistband. So you want to get a nice part of your trimming, especially at the front uh, where it's going to be really noticeable. So let's um, go over to the sewing machine and sew down our trimming to our waistband. Carefully place your needle right on part of the trimming that will keep it secure so it's got to be as close to the edge as possible but it mustn't ruin the pattern so either you can sew onto that chain there or in the middle here and choose a thread that's not going to be noticeable so I've got this brownish colour and sew that down all the way really carefully. And as you're sewing, just check to make sure your thread is on a good place, it looks neat and um, yeah, just so that it's not visible. And then really carefully keep placing your trimming near your centre where the iron mark is, where it's been creased. And uh, I think that looks quite good. You can't really notice where the seam line is. We've sewn along the long edge, as you can see. And now what we want to do is sew down here. So fold this back up the other way so that the trimming is right nicely snug at the top. And we're going to put in a seam line here so that if this is the seam when we open it up that'll be a nice finish. Sew down one end completely but on the other side we want to sew down from about eight inches so that you can get the linger on comfortably and then you can put on your zip which is going to go here. So make sure it's at the same side on all of the pieces that's the lining and the can-can and the actual silk fabric. We want to do exactly the same with the actual fabric itself. So bring together to the two waists, like that, the curves, and then the two long sides. And then just do this and sew down this side and the same on the other. Remember to keep the same amount for your zip. Lastly, we want to join the can can. So, in the same way, bring together the waist like so, and sew down one side and keep a gap for the zip on the other. Once you've joined all three layers together on the side like this, place them one on top of each other. Now, hopefully, the measurement's right and they're all going to be equal, but if they're not, just cut away. Um, what you need to and bring that together without cutting away to so much that it becomes big for you. Next we want to join these three layers together so we want to do a seam around this circle. Um, not only that we want to join the waistband to this now because 
if you do um, join these separately and then join in the waistband after, you may get in some extra kind of uh, folds in there that you don't want to have. So um, try and sew this together all in one go. But if you can't um, and you find that's too tricky, a little bit nervous about it, no problem. Just sew this together first. And when you're sewing the waistband onto this, then just be extra, extra careful so that you're smoothing out as you go along. This is the waistband we made previously. And what you want to do is place this so that it's facing the right side of the fabric. So you have the three layers and you have this, which you want to place in this direction so that when it's the right way you can see that's going to be the skirt layer and the waistband here and then you've got the lining in the middle and the can can right on the inside really carefully let's sew this together to begin with i've just pinned down the three layers so that they don't come apart and if you do them by section you don't pull too much you know that you've got to stay within that section the way i'm pinning my waistband on is i'm pinning halfway of my waistband to halfway of the linger then a quarter on both sides and that way i know that all of this is going to be evened out and no nothing is going to pull because of this bias cut this is the three layers of our outfit and joined to it is now the waistband. So when that's sewn, it's gonna look like this. So as you can see, I've put my band on the bottom and the three layers on top because it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. So just smooth out the three layers um, all the way that you're sewing. Make sure that there's nothing getting in your way. There's no folds and take the pressure off what you're sewing. So hold on to the weight of the linger so nothing is pulling it in any direction. Um, and that's it. You're ready to sew all the way around and good luck. So it was quite tricky but I've managed to put all the layers of the skirt and the waistband on and it looks, it's looking quite neat. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the actual braid itself, this trimming, um, is not stuck down, but I don't think this is going to move. If yours is any different, you could just use the iron on stuff to keep this in place so that doesn't shift when you're moving around and you're wearing it. Try on your outfit. I know there's no zip at the moment, but keep it where you would want to put your zip on and then just mark it with a pin um, so that you know where to put your zip in. And then the next thing would be to add your zip um, where your pin marks are. Don't forget, every time you're using a zip, roll out your zip like that. So I've got my teeth secure with my left hand. And always start off with a double seam. And then unroll the zip as you're going down and you probably only need about seven inches that will be enough for you to slide your linger on and off the final step was to add the zip just like we have in the previous videos as you can see i've tucked the zip straight into the trimming so that there's no extra button or hook and eye to put on it's nice and flush and that's the smoothest that we want to achieve if you enjoyed this tutorial please share please like leave me a comment on anything else that you would like to see and don't forget the next video will be on how to make the blouse